Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Magical Music Monday where we're going to learn a little something about Cubase. But first, I have a question for you. If a blind man poops in the woods, does it really even smell? Okay, here we are in Cubase, and I'm going to teach you all about how to use the new color tool. Uh, this is a template that I have. It's an orchestral template. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of colors. Some people like to use colors like I do. I use them to differentiate the instruments. So it might be strings, brass, woodwinds, percussions on an orchestral template. But if you're doing rock and roll music, it might be drums, bass, guitar, vocals. And then they all go out to a bus and then they go to a mix bus, you know. And I have the buses, the groups or whatever, the same colors as each of the instruments and the mix bus is a different color. And it just helps me keep track. Some people like to use colors a different way. So I'll show you some of the ways that uh, people typically use colors uh, using the new color tool. See, because you can, when you add a track, like this track here, you can go in and set the color if you want to by clicking on this thing, but you'd have to do that for every track. So if you could do it in bulk, you could save yourself a lot of time. Now in older versions of Cubase, the color tool was right here on the toolbar. Uh, but alas, they've taken it away and moved it to where I don't think it's actually displayed by default. So this really confused me, and that's why I'm making this tutorial today. Um, you have to right click on your toolbar, and then there is a option. So yeah, just right click right here, oops. Uh, option for color menu, boom. And then it appears, and all these buttons sort of look the same. It's this one that kind of looks like a paint, bu uh, paint bucket. So if we wanted to change all of these tracks here, all we'd have to do is just highlight it, go to the paint bucket, and they could be green or blue or whatever. Uh, so that's handy to know. And this also works, let's say you have you know a song and there's three sections. You know, if you wanted the A section to be yellow, it could be. The B section could be red, the C section could be green. And so, um, and then it'll show up on your folder and group track uh, as those parts. So you could sort of see arrangement if you're not using an arranger track by doing it that way. So, oops. So that's, uh, that's where the new color tool is. And let's talk a little bit more about colors. So, I mean, some people like to have variations, uh, just like slight variations. So like their longs will be a slightly different red. And in order to do that, you'd have to uh, set up new colors and you can add as many colors as you'd like and you can sort of change the hue or the saturation of each color uh, if you wanna add more. So that's easy enough. You just sort of go into the color menu here and you set up colors. Now. There's a way actually to have these colors extend all the way through the track listings. And in order to do that, you just go to Edit Menu, Preferences, and uh, Event Display, Tracks. And this will determine the saturation of how colorized. So if you just do a little bit, it'll be pretty subtle. So we'll apply that. As you can see, all the tracks turn that. If you go full bore, it'll just be the full bore color. Boom. I don't uh, necessarily use that. I just leave it at the default setting. And so sometimes, you know, that's easier to see where you are within your template if you have a little colorization across the board and you might like think it's more visually appealing to do it that way also. So keep that in mind. That of course, again, is in uh, edit preferences on a, a Windows PC. I don't know what the menu structure looks like on a Mac. And then event display tracks. And of course, there's also the color scheme. Uh, so, you know, you could, you, Cubase doesn't really have skins like Reaper does, but you can change the color scheme uh, like this. And you can make it as wild as you want. You know, you could have a, this could be what you look at every day when you work on audio. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. And then, of course, you can change the user interface custom colors as well. So, I mean, I, I keep everything default because I kind of like the default colors. I think they actually look pretty darn good. But uh, this is also a nice one to set up. If you have different tracks, they'll automatically be defaulted. So if you add an audio track, it'll automatically be light blue, an instrument track, light yellow. 
Uh, that's nice sometimes also. But the most important thing to realize is that, you know, the color menu these days is not a part of the toolbar anymore. You actually have to add it to your bar uh, here at the top. And then it's uh, pretty handy for changing things. You know, you can change a bunch of things in one fell swoop or, you know, change one thing at a time or change events all just using the color menu. And it's just basically select, point, click. Couldn't really be much easier. So this has just been a quick tutorial about the new color menu in Cubase 10. I hope you all have enjoyed it. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.